Hello everyone, this is Video Master Niranjan Navalkun for chess.com and today I am going to cover the game of the day. Of all the games that took place today, I find this game very exciting. It's cute and short. This is played between Divya Deshmukh and Mungsul Dawakwa. Before going straight into the game, let me tell you a little bit about Divya. So Divya is a woman international master. See, she is a three-time national sub-junior girls champion. And don't go by her rapid rating. Her strength is more than what her rating shows. It's just that she has not played many rapid rated events. So let's get straight into the game. In this game, Divya played e4. And uh, opponent played e5. Knight c3, knight c6, bishop c4, g6, d3, bishop g7. And this is the moment that makes this game uh, special for me. Here Divya played h4. You are told initially not to make pawn moves like this but this is how modern chess works. You have to master the rules to break them and here by playing h4 white wants to immediately start an attack on the king side to create more problems for the black's king. And after h4 black can respond with f6 or h5 or knight f6. If h5 then white has to worry about the g5 square which becomes slightly weak. Maybe h6 is interesting so that if there is h5 black can go g5. This is one possibility. But in the game black played knight f6. And after knight f6 Divya did not hesitate and she played h5. The idea being that on knight h5 she had rook into h5. This exchange sacrifice handy. So after g takes h5 she played queen takes h5. Now for masters, this theme is very common because this, this this theme of h4, h5 comes especially when there's a pawn on g6. One of the opening in which I have seen this before is in Dutch. After d4, f5, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, there is h4 and after knight f6 there is h5. So this is also another way of playing you know, against the Dutch defense to go h4, h5 to push Harry the h pawn. Let's get back to the game and after rook h5, g h5, queen h5, you can see that the pawn on f7 is under attack. White is threatening to checkmate. And I think that this position is already very dangerous for black. And uh, maybe d5 is one way to keep the game going but after castles, which is what happened in the game, I think white's position is terrible. Now, if you don't know how to evaluate the position, you can first consider you know, king's safety. Whose king is safe? You can see that the king on g8 will come under tremendous attack. And whose pieces are active? It is white's bishop and queen are already working towards an attack. And then you see the material. Yes, white is an exchange town. But he has this initiative going. And uh, if you see the pawn structure, it has still not come that much into play. So you do king's position, activity of pieces, material and pawn structure. And you see that white is better just because black's king is in danger. And after castles, you know, when you are in initiative, it's better to develop with tempo. And that is what uh, Divya did. She played bishop g5, attacking the queen. And here, if you play knight e7, it's met by knight d5. It's a deadly pin. So after bishop g5, uh, Divya's opponent played bishop f6. Now, this is a nice moment to pause. And... Uh, Maybe spend a moment to take uh, stock of the position. What would you play as white? Okay, I'm going to reveal the move now. You can see that the g5 bishop is attacked and uh, white can retreat the bishop back or uh, you know uh, support the bishop on g5. And Divya not only wants to support the bishop but also wants to get the piece into the game. So she plays knight s3 so that if black takes the bishop on g5, the knight on h3 can hop into g5 and then threaten a mate on h7, which is unstoppable. So after knight h3, black went knight b4, attacking c2, but she did not pay any attention to the c2 pawn because king is important here. And uh, you can see there are three pieces you know, on the king side, even, even the bishop on c4, let's say that's the fourth piece in the attack. Once Bent Larsen said that we need three pieces for an attack. So in this position we have three plus one on the bishop on c4 is also helping. So it's very clear that white is going to win. And uh, in this position Divya played queen h4 putting more pressure on the 
f6 bishop. You know that black cannot take bishop into g5 because after knight g5 this is very dangerous. If you take wing g5, you will just take queen g5 and win the game. So Divya's opponent played knight takes c2 check. White played king d2, knight takes a1, bishop takes f6. Now there is a threat of queen g5 check. And after queen f6, queen f6, white is a queen up and uh, knight d5 is also coming next. And that is what happened in the game. There is knight e7 check. And here Divya's opponent resigned. So this is a very exciting game. I think uh, the move h4 initially shook her opponent uh, and then you know, the surprise value was so much that uh, Divya managed to win in this 15 moves. Now in the overall event, uh, her win was very important because India suffered two losses uh, due to disconnections and uh, India drew the match with 3-3. So kudos to Divya for playing a very nice game. I have a feeling that h4 is a prepared move. Uh, when I checked with the base, there was only one game with h4. But uh, seeing her speed, I am sure that she must have done some analysis in this side, in this area. So I am very glad uh, that uh, she got the point for India. So I hope you enjoyed uh, my uh, little game of the day presentation. And I uh, will be back again with another game tomorrow. Until then, see you. Bye-bye.